to you from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to another episode of Just Cal. Hello and welcome to another edition, Friday's edition of Just Calvin. I am here with Ray Stone Grover, who is a part of the Green Party uh, co-chair and candidate for lieutenant governor uh, in Michigan. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's Friday. Yes, it is. And thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Hey, thanks, for, thanks for being on. Uh, now, that's a typical uh, Green Party uh um, platform basically is uh, for environmental uh, um, betterness, I guess you could say, but go ahead. Uh, we have um, our 10 key values, um, which are uh, social justice, um, um, eco-socialism, um, we believe in feminism and gender rights, um, we have, we support um, our environment, sustainable living, sustainable jobs, um, um, cre other creatures and other life in the environment, um, as well as um, making sure that there's democracy um, and making sure that people have the right um, to uh, be supported by their communities and their governments. Um, I did a sum up, so I hope I didn't miss anything. <laughs> but the just stuff was that. It, 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 it sounds like you got pretty much the uh, good portion of it. Uh, now, what in uh, Michigan is lacking? Uh, any of that? Uh, I mean, other than the obvious uh, water, the, the water, the piping, and stuff of that nature. But uh, there's been a lot of goofy stuff and really bad stuff going on in Michigan. Uh, what, what is your plan for her to uh, to get all of those, get all those things um, acknowledged and fixed. You know, honestly, with Michigan, it's it's going to take a community. You know, there's just there's just so many issues here. Um, but but one of the biggest things and one of the biggest ways is to make sure that our communities feel empowered, um, whether no matter who you voted for, no matter whether you think that Gretchen is is has been very smart in her role or whether you think that she's an idiot. Um, at this point, you know, if the minute that there is an opportunity for something different, um, it is up to the people to make sure that we work together to make sure that what needs to happen happens. Um, and that includes making sure that food is available and accessible to people. That means that we, we're going to work together to make sure that people who need to be housed are housed. Uh, we're going to work together to make sure that we recognize and understand that the student loan debt um, burden that uh, a re too many people are carrying and that too many people have to be aware of right now um, is not just brought aware, um, but is, is acted upon. Um, Unfortunately, Michigan, I think, was strongly encouraged to support change, um, regardless of whether they thought it was with, with the previous administration or with the current administration. And I think at this point, we all can agree that to a certain level, we were duped. Uh, we did not get the changes that we needed to see. And so um, de democratically and also organizationally and, and actively, we need to take the time to to work together to make sure that we are supporting the people who need to be supported. Yeah, it, uh, every state needs that, but especially especially Michigan uh, these days. Uh, mm -hmm. The last high profile thing that happened at that group in Greenway, but other than the right wing uh, Proud Boys trying to take over the Capitol and taking and taking Gretchen uh, Whitmer or something, uh, in well, let's just say uh, in custody. Um, before then was Obama down over the water thing. I mean, yes. that, that, that stunt. And before he goes, I don't usually do stunts, but I'm like, okay, you don't usually do stunts, but you got to do a stunt. And he didn't do anything to get new piping put in, anything of that nature. Uh, well, and then when they asked him to come down there and they were like, you know, let's see you drink this water, he put his lips to the glass and said, oh, it tastes like water to me. Oh. That's a lot of help. Yeah, that, that's really helpful. 
Oh, well, um, and, well, that was also during his second uh, his second reign, so he didn't have to worry about next election. So that and and we and you know another concern that I have is um, so Benton Harbor that we know about now has been asking for clean water for three years since two thousand eighteen. Uh, and there are reports that they were actively asking um, to be to get help because they've had large l amounts of lead in their water since 2018. And and Gretchen Whitmer, uh, our current governor, was being vetted to be the vice president of the United States at the time. So not only were there people in Detroit who had their water shut off at the time that she was being vetted for vice president, there were Benton Harbor, Benton Harbor was asking for support and help with high amounts of lead in their water. So that is someone that I don't think is capable of running the state, but. I mean, if there's any time for a Green Party governor, this would be the time, I would suspect. Lieutenant I, governor and, and you know, uh, members of state, con state legislature, state, state con Congress, Whatever, and any uh, public office in Michigan seemed like this kind of problem would call for the citizens of Michigan to vote in as many Green Party members as they can because the whole concept of Green Party is environmental equality and yeah. equal rights for everybody. And support so, our people. Yes. And, 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 it, and it's really important considering the fact that, you know, Michigan has those, the five freshwater lakes that we are very proud to say that we're surrounded by. So we need to be supporting the fact that they're healthy, that they're safe, that there's creatures in them that need to be protected. Um, we need to be standing with our um, Chippewa tribe and our water protectors to make sure that we're, that, that we're no longer allowing them to get arrested um, for continuing to do what they have declared to do, which is protect clean water for everyone. Um, that the arrest and the um, detaining of Ashinabe and Ashina Ashinabe people and uh, water protectors uh, for for trying to stand against large oil companies like Chevron is is um, a violation of a treaty that this country has made with those people, and they need to be holding to their treaty. All right. In Michigan, uh, what is the unemployment rate? The unemployment rate currently, I'm, I'm not completely sure. I think it's somewhere around five or six percent. That's pretty high, right? For a, for a, a state. Yes. It well, should be good. Um, Michigan has had um, some challenges. Uh, regarding employment and what employment has looked like for us. And um, especially around the first housing crisis, um, we got hit very hard um, and our recovery was slow, but we did see some recovery. But uh, with the recent events, again, we, we experienced some very tr um, large amounts of tragic loss in the Southwest Michigan, Southeast Michigan area, excuse me, um, in the Detroit area, just due to the fact that we had a lot of the issues that we've spoken of. Um, people in the Detroit area had water shutoffs. Um, and so at the time when wash your hands was a big um, part of the line of defense against the virus, um, that was also a time when people did not have the, the ability to do so. So, um, we, uh, our, our industries have experienced some challenges and some hard hits. We're also looking at the fact that a lot of our students um, may have benefited from getting food uh, and, and being fed in schools. Um, and so that had to be compensated for. Um, so, this, and, and there's also a lot of parents who, um, ha who have depended on the school system to be able to go back to work. Um, and, you know, if, if sending kids back to school without vaccinations um, or without decent protections has been an option and that, that they have been able to opt out of, um, parents may be also making that decision as well. And uh, what, what you as a possible uh, lieutenant governor, uh, what would be within your power to help uh, 
get jobs back and get more investment into the state as a whole uh, and to make sure that money goes to repairing uh, the pipes that, that, need, that need to be replaced and housing. Well, one thing that I do appreciate and value is that uh, currently and uh, there has been work for um, a budget that does allow for piping to be replaced for um, the communities around the state. Uh, I also would strongly support looking into green um, environmental, uh, green jobs and green industry. And I also, um, and which can benefit from here because we also, we have a lot of land. Um, I also support looking into and find, and creating sustainable work off of um, the land industry, uh, growing and distributing, um, which includes marijuana. I do support the fact that we have uh, become a more recreational marijuana state. Um, and I support um, the changes that we could make uh, within that industry and building more functional support off of that industry. Um, so those are some things that, that I could definitely look into and do. And then because of my background in activism, I do also support working with organizations and activists who are about making sure that we um, distribute and create access to resources. I mean, what, uh, can you name a few organizations that you'd be willing to, uh, to kind of collaborate with? Well, I know one um, that's uh, Clara Duckett Freeman, uh, who is also a candidate in Michigan. Well, she's, she's running um, in Lansing. Uh, she was working with Mothering Justice. That's a very good organization that does um, support for mothers and families, um, and they make, and make sure that impacts uh, that occur for, for mothers, women, children, and people and families um, are they, that there is access. Um, another organization that I have worked with is um, the Leo of Conservation Voters, uh, which is environmentalists uh, that, that, that monitor issues like PFAS in the water, um, people not being able to drink out of their tap, um, and contamination of water. And they also um, keep tabs and, um, and are aware of the things that are being done by, by leadership and elect elected officials in those roles. Mm -hmm. So um, working with them, there's, um, there's quite a few different food banks um, and community food organizations that exist in this area. Um, so looking at what distribution distribution would look like, looking at what growing looks like, and then also building community around that. So those are just a few, but there are, um, there are some options that, that would allow us to work with people in industry in the area. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, do you, uh, do you, uh, is there a way to uh, have the community at large, like say each, each community, each district have say over um, uh, like rent system, like the community as a whole to buying uh, properties in the area and leaving it up to the neighbors as far as uh, who, who, who gets in there, as far as like low income and stuff of that nature. Uh, is, there a, is there a program or something that I know or do you support some type of fact? There are different programs um, and, and they do different things. Like if, if somebody were to contact 211, uh, one of the things that is done around here in, in some areas is are co-ops and people are actually able to live within co-ops um, and, and take out partial ownership of where they live. Um, so that, that is an option and that's something that we should look into more uh, to make more available for people, um, and and what kind of um, and what kind of in areas would those would be more beneficial to? Um, but there there are resources. I think um, lack of access to resources and lack of knowledge about the resources are a big issue right now. Mm. Uh, and uh, does does the uh, the lieutenant governor have anything to do with? Uh, uh, what is high in schools, or is that strictly to the uh, school board? Pardon? Oh, do, you, do you have any control over uh, over what is taught in schools, or is that strictly a school board? I ask because I think a few uh, uh, 
lessons in certain other aspects of life that should be implemented in uh, in schools, like uh, civics and like like um, uh, critical race theory, that sort of thing. Uh, do you support uh, both of those things or any one of those things or? Well, I, as, as far as curriculum goes, um, the state does create, um, set the curriculum, but that is a particular board. Um, however, critical race theory is a, like, a, um, as, as was spoken about by um, the Justin Paglino, critical race theory, um, which is something that in, in my area of study, which is psychology, um, we were actually able to become more um, understanding about the ethics of Derek Bell, um, who, who is the author of, or one of the authors of critical race theory. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beyond you know, um, regular level education. Um, it's a legal education and you have to be, you have to be um, educated and, and have like a, a, a level of experience and a legal degree to be able to teach it. Um, okay, so, 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 you actually, so you actually have to, you have to have a degree or way to, to be taught that? Yeah, like that, that's not something that's that's taught in schools. That's not oh. something that young kids have access to. No, okay, okay. Go ahead. sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> but what is important that we really should be taking away from that is that what critical race theory does um, excuse me, I have a daughter, <laughs> um, and so I have to talk to her um, sometimes. Uh, but what critical race theory does do, um, especially when the concepts are are kind of discussed, um, is it does allow children who are non-white, especially Black children, to recognize and understand that in certain spaces, they are made to feel like outliers, and they are made to feel... Um, they're they're and and they're treated separately um, and differently and and there is a a system that is built to do that to them and it allows for them to be able to recognize um, how that is not something that is normal and it is not something that is internalized or centered within them and so it empowers black people um, to not feel ousted or not internalize um, systemic issues. And that's not problematic to our society. That actually allows for more integration and more communal work, um, which I encourage and am encouraged by. Um, so anybody who is, who is pushing for um, that type of, of division is not looking for what's best for this country. Yeah, uh, I, I I asked that particular part because I'm just I'm just learning more about it and certain areas of it. Now, my interpretation was different. I thought it was when schools teach the opposite of what the history books were were, were teaching us, which a lot of it was um, America w w was uh, discovered and all that stuff. Not I didn't realize that was actually like in a way trying to still trying to separate. I didn't realize that part, so I'll I'll, I'll look more into that myself. Well, it's it's not a, it's not about separating. Um, it's about specifically creating an opportunity. Um, so, as a as a former black child who grew up in a, a systemically uh, revised um, white uh, um, school system, and and going through that throughout. 20 years of my life, um, what ultimately happens is there is a sense of just overall failure um, and a constant reminder that no matter what I do, I'm not good enough. It doesn't matter how hard I work. It doesn't matter how hard I try. It doesn't matter how much I achieve. Mm -hmm. um, when, the, when the concept and the ethical understanding behind critical race theory and how it can be applied was introduced to me, not necessarily as, um, as a study, but introduced as a scope of broadening worldview, uh, what it ultimately meant was that my ability to come into a situation and bring my perspective did not make it less valuable. As a matter of fact, it brought a value to the fact that somebody who had a similar experience now has an understanding that I'm able to have when I come into it and when I come into a situation. And 
by speaking to my situation or to by speaking to my experience and my perspective, what I'm allowing to happen is allow other people who do not have a white perspective or a white experience to come and say, this is my experience as well. Um, and that brings value. And that brings a value that is not offered when everything is white androcentric. Um, so that is the value of of, of what the theory offers is that there is an understanding that overall there's a value for different perspectives. Okay. No, I, I understand. I actually, uh, I think, I think we share the same mindset in that. Uh, I, I, I also went, I went to a school that was mostly um, native uh, or indigenous uh, and there's very few uh, uh, Caucasians there. I was one of them. I think I was like one of the first ones there. Uh, so me, my sister, and they slowly but surely started adding a little bit more um, kids, uh, not, not like my color, but, you know, like my mindset as far as that part goes. I went there for, uh, for because they had the special ed, uh, special education uh, uh, program in Seattle at the time. Uh, so that's most of the reason why I went to uh, mostly indigenous uh, people's uh, school. So yes, I, I I kind of understand where you're coming from as far as that part goes. Not exactly, obviously, but a little bit. So yes, I I, I hear you. Yeah, it's it's really important um, that we do not. Uh, unfortunately, the models, <clears throat> excuse me, that we've been following for so many years for our children are very. Um, they lack dynamic. Um, they lack, they lack, and, and the fact that right now we're just now talking about and having more in-depth conversation about neurodiversity, um, and the fact that people who have a, a different, um, cognitive perception and read of the world around them, um, can actually benefit from having different applications to their experience is, mind-blowing like yeah. why are we just now realizing that there are people who do not see things the same right that's well, not <laughs> i mean that unfortunately that that's a lot of that is due to uh science research and a lot of times lack of funding for that kind of stuff wow. uh, i mean for the longest time uh, i would i consider myself uh well i i was told i had a lot of syndrome disorder which i i don't i didn't fit the uh, physical uh, image of that. Uh, I didn't have Down syndrome or any of that nature, but I had lots of things I had to deal with autism, like the obsession over like some therapy things, not not being all that uh, social as far as like uh, overall like being a part of conversation more than a couple minutes, uh, stuff of that nature. And I got tested as aut uh, as autistic, uh, autism chart of uh, fifteen out of ten. So I'm like, okay, that that in itself uh, teaches me that okay, I this is where I'm at, this is where I needed to be, and this is what happened and why I didn't uh, do more in school because they were focused on what I couldn't do and not what I could do. Exactly. Exactly. So, I'm like, so yeah, I was I graduated in '97 with a probably sixth or seventh grade uh, reading, writing, all that stuff. But in other cases, I was a lot smarter. Like I always had a business sense. So, but anyway, that's not the point. That's it's not about me; it's about you as far as part goes. So, anyway. <laughs> well, those and, and see, those are the areas where I am most impassioned. Um, just because um, we have a tendency to tell children and and our young people what they can't do before they even get into a point of life when they can actually really try. Um, and by the time so many people by the time they get to the point where it's like it's time to launch it's time to move on it's time to you know really see what you can do um they're so discouraged because our our approach to learning our approach to our approach to psychology is just so damaging yeah um, and even even in the study itself um, is it what I um, I'm not sure how much you follow and I, I love um, social media spaces for this reason but our you know we have an actual psychological movement built around the fact that um, 
because it's been so restrictive, because it's been so damaging, um, there's an entire counter movement that's about healing within psychology, you know, taking the study and, and creating spaces where people can actually apply their, their knowledge and build something forward. So, um, yeah, that's why uh, like certain uh, states like Florida, I think, actually have a few of their inner cities or cities within this tenement uh, that uh, are have restaurants that are trying to cater more to the um, like autistic and other uh, 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 kids that are sensitive to the elements as far as lights, sound, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are some restaurants that are trying to cater to that to that uh, to that. Uh, Group, I suppose. Okay. So yeah. and there is some progress being made, but not a lot, obviously, as far as that part goes. But there's also a uh, there's also a movement of uh, autistic uh, uh, people that are kind of sick of seeing uh, research done on autism, and that it's been so much, but it comes out the same thing. I mean, there's almost nothing that changes in regards to the overall aspect of it. They, they don't know if it's caused by vaccines. They don't know if it's genetic. I'm like, well, I haven't had a vaccine in I don't know how many years, and I follow it's autistic, so there's, there you go. More times than not, it's genetic. Does vaccines cause some like that coming out? Maybe depending on the genome inside the vaccine itself. It's the same thing with the, it's the, same thing with the, COVID, with the COVID vaccine. If you if you notice uh, those, those that have passed away had key uh, key health problems that that I think were brought out more and the the uh, the effects of the vaccine helped bring out the the severity of, of, of those uh, health problems more and faster. That's why they got complications of COVID nineteen, not because of COVID nineteen. Well, I, I, I'm not a medical professional, but I mean... No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I know that. No, I, was, I was referring to like the vaccine element of things and stuff that nature because it, it brings out certain elements that your body already have. Is, is what I was trying to bring forward on that. Not the, uh, you know... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think I went a little too far on that, but anyway. Um, I, I mean, I, I can offer, um, cause it's like, cause I can't offer insights. What I would, what I would, uh, what I would tell anybody is, is to read and, and to know your body. Um, there's, there's a lot of aspects of things that, you know, I mean, people, we inhale pollens during the allergy season and our yeah. body overreacts. I mean, there's, there's just all types of things that we, we really should take the time to, that it would be great if we were more encouraged to yeah. know um but uh when we do have the time and it's it's rare and and it's challenging but as people continue to say i'm not going to continue to support this capitalist system um people may be seeing um more um of the benefits of of being able to take some time and get to know what they need right now and that's what i would encourage um yeah. And, and I think that's that's probably the best way to go about it. This is this is a time to figure out what you need and, yeah. and how to take care of yourself. Yeah, I mean, and people who are watching this and listening to this on Anchor, uh, and they need to realize the Green Party is quite literally the only party out there that's actually trying to do anything for the environment and is willing to uh, make sure that those policies that would benefit the environment benefit us as a race as a species um, would be better off with the planet still being here and not fracking and other things like that. I know Michigan has a, a quite a few uh, uh, facilities that frack, right? Just like Ohio does. Oh, I'm sorry. We have facilities that, that frack? Is yeah. that what you said? Yes. I'm, oh, geez. Um, <laughs> I um, know I guess, but I don't know why I was asking. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure, uh, which is 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 something that I'm not excited to admit. Um, I know that we have we have a, a fair amount of our in, environmental issues, um, um, but our biggest thing right now has been pipe the pipeline issue uh, with Line Five, which was canceled um, recently by Gretchen Whitmer. 
Um, and um, so as far as our, but, but at the same time, um, uh, we have been urging communities to use uh, products uh, of PETs um, because they don't have clean water. So um, we also have issues with landfill, landfills, um, which is one of the biggest reasons why our tap water can become contaminated. I'm not yeah. sure if you're aware of our um, large amount of landfill issues. Um, Actually, I'm not. I don't think that's all that I've talked about or even acknowledged. So, yeah, so if you want to go uh, go uh, you can talk about that. So with our, our trash, um, we have a tendency to have certain places where they will collect the land, collect the trash and put it underground. Mm. Um, and over a while, over time, it piles up and creates large hills of trash, um, which in which they then um, cover with like green top with grass. Um, but they release methane um, they're, they smell awful, um, and we have a large amount of them in the southeast area, and then as you go northeast, um, we have quite a few. We had one, we have one, um, at one point when we still had the Palace of Auburn Hills, which was a very large building, it was a large, um, stadium-esque type building. Yeah, yeah. Um, the landfill behind it was larger than it was. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's a big one. Uh, they, they when they knocked down the Palace of Auburn Hills, they marked down a they knocked down a very large marker for how how large and overgrown that mountain of trash is. Um, and so, as a result, we we do need to uh, recognize and understand that Michigan has a large trash problem. We have, which is also a concern for our water, um, both our running water um, and and our our freshwater lakes, because of the amount of contamination that can get into the ground. You, you would have thought that they would have like come up with a a, a way of disposing that trash before they did that, because. I just imagine those that were there watching the building go down. They're going, ah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what they did um, was uh, when I was still a child, um, they actually had us go to and tour the landfills as children um, to normalize it. This is, um, but they they gave a kickback to the communities that allowed the landfills to be built there. So those homeowners got paid. To be able to uh, to to take in all of the trash, um, and so now ultimately, what thirty years later, almost um, we have communities that are filled with that have these very large, overgrown masses of trash um, that aren't going to go anywhere. They they were we were we were told as children that um, you know the 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 trash would break down and over time they would just end up a flat land. Right, yeah. 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 Was that, that, that was decompose or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so now we we have um we ha definitely have something to, that we need to do with that. Um well that that's like uh well the method. I mean not the the, the item itself not the same but there's like nuclear waste. It's like mm -hmm. You can keep that in one place or another for so many years, but the substance itself lasts thousands of years, and mm -hmm. it seems like the same thing with trash. So, just need to find a, a more sustainable and better way to get rid of that, and may, maybe it's through um, methods like uh, like finding a way to. to would you, I wonder if you'd be able to melt down one. In the other, and use that. Not use the uh, the other for some kind of energy uh, sufficiency until it runs out. I, I mean, at this point, we we really do need to be looking into what alternative methods we can take and what we can do. Um, our 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 local communities and direct communities are suffering now. They're dealing with these things now. Um, the air is is not you know, is, is not fresh, it's a concern. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about a climate crisis and we need to take action, but we also have, you know, decisions that were made before I was even old enough to vote, before I was even old enough to know what was going on, 
um, that we really need to start um, taking some some serious action regarding. Yeah, the, I, I'm looking at the industries that cause these things, gas, oil, coal, and all that. And it seems to me like they have created a market such that it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if people stop using any of their products, they can still make money based off of their own stock options and buying up back their own stock. So they don't necessarily need to be able to uh, dispose, sell those things. So, so they don't, so they don't have a, a, uh, they don't have a, a weak, they, they don't have a reason to, to get rid of that because they, either way they've got money based on, you know, the stock. They don't have to continue. They, yeah. They don't. Yeah. Um, but at this point, what we're dealing with is greed um, and the hoarding of wealth and, and the distribution, the simple and easy distribution of debt. For some reason, our, our economical system has made debt so easy for people to just kind of distribute among the um, the financially insecure, and we're not, you know, we're not seeing any recovery from that. Um, yeah. And and you know, back in the day, <laughs> um, there was a time when you know we had an understanding that if we if we supported these companies, these companies would make sure that we were able to support ourselves, and that's just not the case. Yeah, that'd be trickle down the economics when. Uh, that's more or less like uh, we'll give you a little bit, a little bit here. But unfortunately, due to their wealth growing, that meant that they they could uh, make uh, prices of living uh, go up, but keep the price of them paying uh, low or you know very very small. And and the the realities of that um, have we've seen in so many different ways. Um, and that's one of the biggest, at, uh, you know, impacts of the Green Party is the fact that we are so tired of watching um, people have to continue to suffer off of the, the basis of one bad decision, you know, and it's not even a decision that, that they particularly made. It was a decision that could have been made, you know, decades before, you know, people, those people were even able to be part of the decision making process. Here's uh, another thing about like the debt situation is the debt situation right now from what, I, from what I've been looking up and studying, and I'm a big proponent for monetary theory. So debt is kind of like my hobby of sorts. When someone uh, talks about spending, we can't afford this, then I tend to look at what the corporate debt is, what the money we, that was spent on uh, uh, the, uh, the military industrial complex when it itself uh, that's been paid by debt as well. So uh, deficit spending is uh, where we get the money to be able to put back into the economy. They take that money and they go and they go elsewhere with it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if if that money was put back within the system so it could be taxed out, there would be no national debt. Right. If you if you think about it, because the claim is like thirty, like what twenty eight trillion dollars. In reality, the Pentagon has spent thirty five trillion since nine eleven, and there are uh, at least ten trillion dollars worth of uh, of uh, corporate debt that the Fed has on its books right now, and that's basically them per, uh, asset purchasing through the banking system, so that those banks have reserves to be able to loan out. Because they were afraid during the pandemic that a lot of people had to default on a lot of different uh, assets like houses, cars, whatnots. So the so the Fed bought that back, and once those people didn't, they then sold it back to the to the banks, which the mm -hmm. banks still were able to make money based on that. But because exactly. of, because of how we distribute cash, they once the uh, the the recent uh, spending package went through, it went to the Fed. The Fed then went and put the, put the money into the IRS. The IRS then gave us the money so we could put it back into the system. Right. So it's about spending and taxing. They don't I get mean, taxed enough it to is, get that money out. 
it's a it's it's it, from the from from what you explained to me i only see one thing and that's the debt only goes one way it, yeah. it doesn't go the other way so we see so so we get you know charged the debt and um yeah and they, yeah. And, and they still get paid exactly they're continuing to build on their wealth yes and so, the people and the people who made those legislations are the same ones who are still in office right so people need to see that part and it's a two-party system that's creating that and so get the ranked choice voting and get the open primaries up and you'll have you won't have immediate change but you'll actually know what change is like exactly right you you know we'll be able to see some some movement in another direction besides you know broker <laughs> yeah exactly yes uh, so was there anything else you wanted to add to the conversation? Like where, where can people donate? Where can people uh, get a hold of you? That sort of thing. Um, yeah. So if people are interested in donating, um, because I am a strong supporter of donating um, to being able to increase our access uh, to our voting community, I would say you can donate directly to ballots uh, to the ballot at gp.org. You can look at that ba um, ballot access drop down. You can donate there. Um, if you're interested in donating specifically to um, what's going on, um, you can you can donate to the Green Party of Michigan (JPMI). You can go to uh, I think it's Michigan Green Mi Green Party dot uh, com, and you um, you may be able to use our donation link there. Uh, we actually have a new website coming up, so. Um, if you can't right now, you will be able to soon. And then also keep an eye out for the Michigan candidates uh, because we are we are deciding to come and take 2022 by storm. So I certainly hope so as far as that part goes. Uh, <laughs> now, I've been trying to get the Green Party to learn more about modern monetary theory so that when the argument of paying the pay for comes up, uh, the Green Party has more of a more of a insight on how that can happen. So one book that I would actually recommend, I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's The Deficit Myth by Stephanie Jolton. I don't, get, I don't get paid to promote this. I, I read it and a lot of it actually made so much sense. That's how I'm able to actually regurgitate what I'm able to tell you. Okay, so, that sounds awesome. And yeah, this is actually not a bad price. I think on Amazon, which I'm not trying to support Amazon, but I can buy it there. So there you go. And also look up... Uh, uh, see Warren Mosler and other people like that that learn more about it uh, if you guys want to pick up your game on the economic side of things and also be able to actually have a decent uh, debates online when it comes to that so anyways uh, thanks for being here uh, I look forward to talking to you again uh, in the future and uh, wish you the best in uh, your candidacy Thank you very much, uh, Calvin. Also, if I can also add, I am Free Fire on Twitter. So if if you want to follow me there. Um, <laughs> also your website. Oh, yes. And my website is freefire.com. Um, but you can also um, follow my my, gov my lieutenant governor website. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> not, not now. Anyway. <laughs> But um, so yeah, you can uh, and and I'll share the link to that. Thank you. <laughs> it's my pleasure as always. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll chat on Twitter. See ya. <laughs>